Let's go to Canberra now. Joining us live is Liberal MP Tim Wilson. <laughs> is that the D's? Of the course D's? it's the D's. <laughs> it was a magnificent game on Friday night and we're looking to flambéing the doggies in Perth in a couple of weeks' time. So will you be wearing that scarf uh, right up until then? Pretty much. That's what happens. <laughs> OK, just get your thoughts on Joel Fitzgibbon standing aside at the next election. What did you make of it? Well, Joel's a fundamentally decent, honourable man in my experience, and so I actually do believe that he'll be a loss to the parliament uh, in saying that there does seem to be some trickery going on where, you know, Christina Keneally could have always been parachuted into that seat um, and probably might have even fit a little bit better, but obviously there's some division within the New South Wales right. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, I don't share his sentiment around the Labor Party. The Labor Party's never been more captured by uh, a small group of uh, voters who represent their left progressive strand rather than a working class Labor strand. Mm. So, I mean, he said in the past that you know, Labor's in danger of splitting into two. Do you agree with him? I think that was always the risk. You've got the inner city progressives uh, who, you know, have no real connection to primary industries uh, and uh, then you've got actual working Labor, uh, the traditional voters of the Labor Party and, of course, their interests are not in alignment. One uh, is interested in how they improve the lot for themselves, their families and their communities and the other one is interested in how it empowers bureaucrats to run our lives. OK, just on to the, uh, the story of the day, Tim. It's um, freedoms, some of them being applied to, to those in Sydney today. You can go and get a picnic if you wish, um, as long as it's in your, your, your local government area. But isn't it, is it time now, not in a month or two, to have more freedoms than that, particularly for fully vaccinated people? Well, what's critical is there's a clear roadmap out of this. I mean, we've all gone into this very difficult period in our different states, respectively, T harsh lockdowns which have led people to be dramatically restricted uh, in their freedoms. We have a national roadmap which outlines how to get out of uh, restrictions. States need to back that up. So New South Wales is doing that. Victoria has not done that. Instead, just kind of leaving a state of perpetual lockdown uh, against some broad targets. I think it's time that the state government outline very clearly what the pathway is out mm. of this. Yeah, well, my colleague um, Paul Murray, he made the point last night on his show that in regional Victoria, you still can't visit Nan and Pop, even though the double vaccination rate for over 70s is now at 70 and a half percent. So do you share his view? Well, I won't go into specifics of whether you're able to do what particular activity or otherwise, but uh, there should be clear benchmarks that when you hit 70 percent, these are the... Uh, the you know, freedom that is uh, regained uh, and, of course, once you get to 80% double vaccination, a pretty clear and compelling commitment where the responsibility shifts. At the moment, we're told what citizens can't do. I think the government has to start explaining and justifying what it's doing. But do you get the sense, too, that people have given up or they've had enough, I should say? I mean, you're looking at pictures out of Sydney in the weekend where, where a lot of people, and it's not illegal, they weren't doing anything wrong, they went to the beach and it ruffled a lot of feathers. But, I mean... I witnessed some of that too and I thought I, I, I just got the feeling that people are done with it 18 months on. Well, well, it plays out in different places because, of course, if there isn't any COVID in your community, it's very... Uh, a lot of people are finding it very difficult to strict is adherently to some of the rules yeah. uh, in practice. Um, but, you know, the best thing that people can do to mitigate their risk is, apart from social distancing, is to get out into fresh air. Uh, and this is one of the challenges that's always been around these lockdown measures. They're largely about keeping people apart yeah. in their homes where people need fresh health, fresh air and healthy exercise. Yeah, and, and people who, who have been vaccinated, well, they've done their bit. Right, they've done their bit and now they, they want to get rewarded for that. Well, they've done their bit, but they also still share a responsibility to others around not spreading the virus. And, of course, you can still get the virus even if you uh, yeah. are vaccinated. It's just that the impacts are less. But this is where I do agree that people are over it, um, and that's why a clear roadmap out is clear is necessary. But critically, that the state governments need to start justifying their measures rather than just dictating to uh, Australians how they're going to live their lives. OK, well, on that point, when it comes to the New South Wales government anyway, the, the, the Premier has, has backed away from doing her daily press conference. Do you support her on that position? 
Resolutely, yes. I think uh, Gladys Berejiklian is, you know, demonstrated the signs of a true leader, which is you do things which other people aren't, and it's difficult, and you have to justify it. But frankly, I find the media's obsession with these press conferences is almost the equivalent of, you know, a, 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 a sort of bizarre obsession um, and an easy way to get copy rather than actually scrutinising uh, the government. Well, I think well isn't, what we it, need isn't is it just holding the government to account? Well, except for the fact that it means that it's keeping to account only on one issue. Parliament has a job to hold uh, the government to account. Uh, of course, um, what press conferences do is make it particularly easy for journalists to turn up, ask a couple of questions, type a bit of copy and send it off to print, when in fact accountability is a little bit more complicated than that. Well, D Daniel Andrews doesn't do it every day, so, I mean, that, 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 that strengthens your argument on that point, doesn't it? I, I, but I agree. I think, you know, um, it's not just that. It keeps people on a constant uh, cliffhanger about what's going to be said next or what's going to be announced next. Um, you know, these are health-based, uh, data-driven um, uh, daily press conferences and there's no need for the Premier to do it and for them to be broadcast live uh, to the entire state and for everybody to wake up every morning and decide what they're going to do based on the words of the Premier at a press conference. OK. Tim Wilson, good to chat. Talk to you soon. Thanks. Coming up.